Right, we're going to kick off our afternoon session, which will be a, a block for the next sort of couple of hours. So this afternoon we're going to be talking about um, internet and mobile phone reception. We've got Ian Ware from APA Sound. So just a bit of a spiel on what Ian's going to be talking about. Uh, connectivity is critical to the adoption of new technology in your farming enterprise. This session will cover internet and connectivity options, including new technology to improve reception as well as exploring methods of optimising your current connection to make the most of it. So I know where we live, just south of Area Park, our mobile service reception is very average and it's one, one of the most frustrating things that we face when trying to implement these new technologies and we don't actually have the phone reception or the data to be able to, to make it happen. So hopefully we get some tips and tricks from Ian this afternoon. So that I've uh, got the lay of the land Who's frustrated about internet? Everybody. Okay. What do you think? What you've got to do is treat your data side and your phone side. Try to treat them as separate problems, right? Even though with 4G and 3G and the way they're doing the whole thing, it's it sort of dovetails together. But try to keep your data side and your phone side as as two different problems. With um, with farm technology, you've got to look at adapting across to whatever's happening at the time. Unfortunately, it only lasts three, four years and you've got to change the item out and go to something new. Well, that's the nature of the beast. But what you've got to do is adapt quickly. Look at the thing, how you're going to use it, what you're going to use it for and get on board real quick. And um, A lot of technology, as you know, with the drones and weed spraying and tractors and closed circuit TV is a big one. It saves you a lot of time on the farm. You implement that, you implement a <coughs> farm-wide network over your farm and then turn around and put a whole stack of closed circuit TV cameras in, you can save yourself a huge amount of time. Same with, with animal tracking, water monitoring, and all types of water monitors or pH monitors or any type of monitor on the farm you want to look at. Connectivity is the limited factor. So what you're trying to do is one thing is getting good mobile phone reception and Wi-Fi or internet across your farm in key spots. So let's say you want to, you know, your shearing shed, your machinery shed, the house, uh, even the outhouse, a nice quiet spot to read on your iPad in. So what you're trying to do is go after hot spots all over your farm and you can set that up yourself. And once you've paid for that, it's done and dusted. And it's not technology that you're gonna to buy today and it's gone tomorrow. That technology is, is growing and getting better, but it, the principle is not changing. So you're putting up at your own system, well, is a 10 or 15 year um, investment. And the great thing about it is, you're not, uh, you know, on the patent alone, you can then get your neighbours to give you a hand to set it all up so you can share the costs. But we'll get through that. One of the biggest things is trying to get better speed. And there's a stack of ways of doing that. And they don't, the telcos will do not want to tell you how to get better speed. Because the slower the speed, the more money they can get out of you. It's as simple as that. So... The quicker the connection, the less money you have to pay. So that, what, that thing you should think about in your head. Improving mobile phone coverage is your first thing to look at. So we're dealing with mobile phones here, 3G, 4G, right? Whether you hang it off and, and look at the internet on your phone or whatever, the 3G, 4G factor is getting better and better in Australia and we will soon go to 5G and 5G will be like the holy grail. But we have got Optus moving in. So Telstra are actually getting some decent opposition and they're not mucking around. A, Tels uh, a Telstra tower, so much gear, an Optus tower, fibre to the base and a lot of equipment and a lot faster, and they're giving us a lot more bandwidth to play with for a lot less dollars. 
Coverage maps are available and in your area it's pretty good here. You've got pretty good right from here right down to Moora through to Wagga and that there's a fair amount of towers. And the other great thing about it is you've got a fair amount of little hills that you can shove a transmitter on to get it all through your valley. And if you get your neighbours in place, one bloke might have a shearing shed sitting on a hill in a perfect spot. Another guy might be a pump unit with power in a perfect spot. So you've got to really start looking around your patch and see what you've got. So this is the Telstra coverage map, West Wylong. And as you can see, the green is the, the 4G. But this is what you need to look at. So this is Telstra 4G X phone coverage map, right? This is without an antenna. This is just a straight phone sitting by itself. With an antenna on your truck, that's what happens. So I'll go back to the original one. Get that one in your head. Put an antenna on the front of your vehicle. Now look at the not so much spots. So then, that's with So that type of antenna. But out here, you should be really, realistically, you should have one that's about six foot long. And that is a very, very good antenna. This is only four to six dB, where your other big antennas are eight or nine dB. If you're out in the paddock and you're on long, flat going, you're far better off with a bigger antenna. But there is equipment you can hang between this and your cradle that, will, is, that is going to revolutionise the whole of this idea. So these things boost about 7 or 8 to 10 dB. dB is like its strength, right? So that, that there, sorry, that there is with no dB and a straighter phone. That's with 7 dB to 10 dB, okay? Now if you put a set of boots or a linear amplifier on this that I'll show you in a minute, and the, they've got a legal one that'll fit an Optus and, uh, and Telstra, so whichever carrier you're mainly with, which would be Telstra out here, you would go with a better system. Now this is Optus coverage. So it's pretty dismal through the area. It's, it's getting there but they're about to crank 4G all over this area and it'll get a lot better in the next two or three years it'll come up to par to Telstra. Now as I said for antennas, so the littlest antenna is the little whip now this one, these ones here is that antenna so that's the range and that one there is the six foot antenna so he's a lot longer, okay? And you can get quick releases, so you can have a, this one, it pops off, you put the long one out and the paddock on, when you go to town you can just quick release, put it inside or just turn around and uh, have the small one. So you can have a couple of antennas aboard if you really are having problems with reception. G'day guys, so... Being the techno nerd that I am, I couldn't go past getting myself one of these when they came out on the market. This is the Cellfi Go. And these are a phone range booster. So they'll actually boost the signal where you are if there is any signal to be boosted. Now these are the only ones on the market at the moment that are legal and authorised by Telstra. Everything else at the moment is illegal. In fact these can actually be turned off by Telstra if they choose to, if there's an emergency or anything like that. And as far as the unit goes itself, there's not a lot to it. There's a power jack there. Down the bottom here you plug in the internal antenna in the car so the phone signal will actually get boosted to this antenna. And then up the top here you plug in your external antenna, which in my case is mounted on my bull bar. Now there's not a whole lot to these units. There's also a couple of LED lights there which show what it's doing at the current time because you can have it on 3G, 4G or automatic because it can only boost one band at a time. As far as mounting, there's not a lot to it. I'll show you where I've mounted mine. So personally for me, the best spot to mount the self I go is behind the driver's seat on my cupboard here. This is just plywood, so just screws straight in. 
I've hardwired the power supply here into my electrical system, which is already here. And then I've got my uh, internal antenna hooked up here and my external antenna hooked up there. So as far as install goes, there's not a whole lot to it. As far as the external antenna is concerned, I just decided to mount it on the bull bar because it's just the easiest spot for me to put it. And previously I used to have an external antenna for a cradle system, which also used to give me better range, but the self go is just next level stuff. So the self go has an app, thankfully. And as you can see, we're getting a boost of nine at the moment. Nine is ideal. And you can also see what the input signal is at the moment, which is pretty much one bar. Now that kind of jumps between eight and nine boost, but nine's pretty good. If you're getting one, that's pretty shocking. So when you're installing the internal antenna, you want as much isolation as possible from the external antenna. So that means it's differences of height and also just pretty much as many metal objects and other things being in the way of the two antennas. So for me, I used the app when I was doing this, and you pretty much just move the internal antenna around until you get a boost of 9, pretty much. So for me, I ended up installing mine just there, underneath the steering wheel, and that's uh, proven to be a really good spot as well, so that when it's in my phone cradle, it's nice and close as well. Okay, so you got the self go installed, and you're out in the bush. How well does it actually work? Well, at the moment, I'm camped on the Blackwood River down south, and there is no service anywhere around this area without the self fi go. So, let's have a look. At the moment, we're on 9 boost, and as you can see, we've got 4 bars, 5 bars, and we've got internet as well. Just go into the SIM card status, so that you can see we're at kind of minus 75. Hopping up and down a little bit, but anyway, we got good service. So, let's turn it off and see what happens to the signal. And it just dropped like a stone, minus 113, which pretty much means no signal. So it'll probably take a little while for the bars at the top to uh, update. So it's taken about a minute for the phone to realize that it's got no signal, but as you can see at the top now, it's got the indicator there, notification that there is no signal at all which is confirmed by the uh, signal strength, which is minus 113, which means there's squat all. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, if you just give me a minute, I'll boot it back up and we'll see what we get, eh? So I've booted the unit back up now and we're sitting at about four or five bars and we have internet. So as I said, there's no other service in this area normally. It's all the self fire go, otherwise this is a dead area. So this unit is absolutely awesome. Now you won't get service everywhere. The best way to check if there is a possibility you're going to have service is check the Telstra map. So the Telstra coverage map, I'll put a link for that in the description down below. And uh, I'll actually show you now because I've got internet. So these aren't going to give you signal every unfortunately, but the Telstra coverage map is just a really easy indicator to see where you have signal and where you won't. In our current location right now, there is absolutely no signal for about 400 meters, yet I have five bars and I was able to load up this internet page with the cell fire go. That's pretty epic. So it's not a miracle, but it'll give you signal in a lot more places than you'd normally have it. So yeah, definitely something to think about if you head out into the bush a lot and like your signal. There's a couple of reasons you might want it. Maybe you want to check the weather. Maybe you want to check Instagram if you're addicted. Or maybe you follow sports and have to know whether the Dockers lost or won. I don't know. Anyway, great thing to have. Catch you next video, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Subscribe. So the go is, the, <laughs> the go is, these units are damn good. So if you do a lot of traveling in and out of areas and you're pretty frustrated with the phone service, you're crackers if you don't get one. They are really good. Of all the things that we've seen come in, even the cell fi one units that fit in the house, how many people have got one of those? What do you think? Better than nothing and it works. Be very careful with the two boxes. You've got to make sure that they're placed not too close to each other. And there's a little meter on the box to tell you there. So that's an important. And how many have external antennas on those boxes? You do? Great stuff. Yeah, an external antenna is definitely the way to go. If you're after 4G, you need two antennas. If you're after 3G, you only need one. So with 4G and 4GX, I'll explain how that works. If I had a, if I had a, after a 3G signal, it'd be out like that and cocked up a little bit, pointing at the tower. So that's 3G. But 
If you're after 4G, you've got to actually do them like that. One like that and one like that. Because what happens with 4G, the, cable, the signal comes in screwed like that. So what happens with that is that one's like picking up and the one's transmitting. So with a MIMO signal, two antennas, and you can really boost it, especially 4G. On the back, of, on the cell phone box, you'll see uh, two antenna plugs. You'll actually see two. Yep. Depends on the new, it's all the new models have two. You can actually get better antennas than these. So one of those on the roof will only give you five or six Ks. This will give you about 30 or 40. One of those. 70 or 80 with those, and then with a parabolic antenna, which is a big dish sort of one, it gets up to the 90. And there's another one, a panel antenna, a special panel antenna, takes two cables, and it really, really goes well, 120 k's away from the tower, and still brings it in. So there are ways to get it to your house and boost it around the house. You've got to imagine your house is covered in alfoil, council rules and regulations, that stops the signal from coming in. So the other thing with car antennas, car cradles, there's a couple of cradles around and how many people have put in a new cradle and then the phone's dropped in the drink and then the cradle's no good? Heaps of us have had to replace the cradles heaps of times. Well, they make a nice cradle, Berry makes a good cradle for each type of phone. So you buy the cradle or the holder for the phone, it fits on the phone, and then you buy a holder that you put in each vehicle. And this cradle for the phone actually hooks in all the, all the vehicles. So if you've got one of the trike, bike, tractor, header or whatever, you can just have the holder in there and then just move your cradle holder for the phone around. It's important that this one matches this one. So when you buy these things, they have to match this phone because the antenna pickup is there, the antenna pickup on this six is here. So it lines it up and it gets good connectivity between the two antennas. Even though there's no physical, it's a lot better connection. So it's far better to have yourself a number of these. So you, your wife might have a four and you might have a five and son might have a four S. Then you'd have all different cradles fitting into a, each into the same holder in each truck. Makes sense and it's pretty cost effective. Now the biggest reason you'd buy a Cellfly Go is that there. On a phone cradle you get seven or eight dB. On a Cellfly Go you get 70 dB. It is massive difference. So it will cover a lot of your dropout spots. And that 7 dB to 70 dB in our terminology is huge, absolutely massive gain in antenna boost. Now if you want to know what your phone signal's like, and let's say you've got to put up one of these Yagi antennas on the house, and you say, now where's the tower, and which direction, you can actually, if you've got an apple, you can punch this number in, and it will give you the signal strength up in the top corner. Very handy little tool, and all the phones do it. If you don't have an apple, you just Google field test mode, and it'll tell you the number for your phone. Okay? You can't put that in speed dial. So you, have to, you can put it in speed dial, but you have to punch it in manually each time, because they won't let you multiply ring that number. So what that, that is doing, a field test on your phone to the tower. The tower comes back with signal strength, and then you see it in the top left-hand corner of your uh, phone, the signal strength. Internet connections, the types of connection. NBN fiber, NBN wireless, ADSL2. Then how many people are on this one in the room, the satellite? One, one. 3G, 4G, how many's on that? Getting their internet. Stackiers. And has anybody set up their own relay for NBN yet? I'll show you exactly how to do that in a minute. So NBN fibre. Oh. 
is a um, is an option, but it's not around here in any of these areas. It's lucky to be in Wagga, and they're having real issues with it because the old ADSL is running quicker than the uh, NBN fiber. Fixed wireless. Now that's where a few years. So I've got a few years on that. Very good. So note that person that nodded his head. Put your hand up on fixed wireless in this room. One, two, Jeff. Okay, so you need to talk to your neighbours because you've every fixed wireless connection, so every box that's down inside there has four connections out of the base of it. And normally you're just using one, right? They send 100 megabits to this the, to your house and you only use 25 of it, right? Now the interesting thing about it is you have three other ports that you could share with three other farmers that are not so lucky with you. So if, you know, we will hopefully in the future you'll be able to share three farms around you with three internet connections by personally putting their own beam from your house to their house. With the four connections on the bottom, you would have four individual separate NBN connections. So he, this house will pay $69 for his connection and then you would pay on port B $69 for your connection. So that's the NBN rollout map. So there's your West Wylong. So there's, so you've got a fair bit of spitted coverage all over the place. So if you're sitting here, you've got the option of that somebody sitting there, somebody sitting there, or somebody sitting anywhere in here that's got it. So if, that, if you've got a neighbour that you can see, or a hill that you can see, and see this uh, one of these people, then that's the way to go. Now, when you do that system, you can share it, but it's advisable, that, well the law says, I've got to keep it farm by farm. So farm A, his own $69 connection, farm B, farm C, right? But let's say you're on farm C, for instance, $69 connection. You then could have it at your shed, your shearing shed, the outhouse, the son-in-laws, the sister-in-laws and your house. Let's talk about routers for a minute. Now, does everybody know what a router is? It can, uh, the signal comes in from the antenna up the top into an intermediate box and then runs into a router. So how many of you have still got the cheap router that the ISP sender sent you? Hands up. The yeah, the one Telstra gave you. Ha hands up. How many still got that cheap router? Those routers are about $6.80 out of Taiwan <laughs> and they're bloody useless. No they <laughs> yeah, they give them to you because they're cheap, right? <laughs> If you have a Wi-Fi pro how many people here know the difference between Wi-Fi and internet? Are you a bit confused or do you want me to explain the difference between Wi-Fi and phone and internet? So the internet signal comes into the house, comes down and comes into this router. And you can hook this router up to a, a, a PC with a, a lead and that's just plug it in. Or you can sit in the, lo sit in the lounge room with your iPad and receive the signal off these antennas here. Now most of the antennas that they do, they give you in the most of the routers they give you that are cheap are not worth peeing on if you know what I mean, they're not that good. You're best off paying a few quid, three, four hundred dollars to buy a decent modem. That wireless modem will give you AC, it'll give you a number of transmissions. That one's on, see it, that's, that one there is the current one that you've got. That's how much signal it's putting out. It's hardly registering. Two years old, or three years old, two years old, and these are the current ones in the last year or so. So how fast they go. So that's, you know, this one's hardly registered, not even one or two. And this one's up into 3,000. It, it makes it faster and it also gets around the house a lot quicker. Yeah. A lot of people have the bottleneck, the bottleneck's in this. 
not necessarily in your NBN connection, nine times out of the ten it's this thing. And these put out, this one puts out four different types of signals for four, all, all the new devices are using this. Old devices are using these. So you might have an old iPhone or an iPad using say that one there, G or N, you might have the latest iPhone or whatever, you might be using this one. So it shares the signal around the house. And as you can see, technologies in the last three years has got a hell of a lot better. Now AC is cracking along at 3,000 compared to, if you've got an old modem there, it's hardly doing any work. It's not even doing, it's terrible. I can, can I swap the one that I've got like myself there? Yep. Yeah, straight into JB Hi-Fi, pick it up off the bench and put it in. Now some ISPs, right, you have to put in a password. Yeah. Telstra and the big boys, you just plug it in. There's no password. Now, there is a password for your Wi-Fi, right? You know how you come into the house, I've got to put this bloody great long number into the Wi-Fi. You can make that number up and put it in, you call it dog, cat, you know, Methuselah or anything. Make it simple. Or not even, if there's no one in 5Ks here, don't even put a password in. So when you come in, you're straight onto it. So buying a new modem is a very prudent thing to do. And Nighthawk, Netcom, Netcom Nighthawk modems, they've got a new one out that's got four antennas on the back of it instead of those six antennas. And they've actually got amplifiers in the antennas and if you've got a big old stone building, how many people's got a big old stone building with thick walls or got an office out the back 50 metres? Well, these things overcome all that. All the bedroom or, you know, where you've got the office at one end of the house and the bedroom and lounge rooms. So you, these types of units. And you can spread Wi-Fi around the house very, very easily. Is there a restriction to signal? Okay, let's talk about speed, okay? I hope you can handle this. I'm going to tell you the truth, <laughs> right? Okay. What happens is, is since the government has asked for a lot more money off these ISPs and what's happened is, is the whole system, a lot of the smaller ISPs, there's 122 of them, a lot of the small ones have oversold their product. So they haven't got much bandwidth to give out. Telstra's one of the big ones, it's got plenty of bandwidth but they are not necessarily that brilliant. Optus is another provider, pretty good, but there's Double I net, West net, um, TPG, and uh, Activate, all those are all in the big boys. So they've not oversold their product. And when you go to sign up with these guys, they'll be straight with you and say, do you want the extra $10 streaming package? And you say, B -b yes, you must go with this streaming package because what happens is with a lot of the ISPs and if you look in their little fine print, right, you go with that ISP and if you stream Netflix, the weather even, the weather, you know, YouTube, anything, they slow you for 48 hours. So all of a sudden you say, geez, my internet's absolutely gone to pot, what's going on here? So actually one of your kids or somebody looked at play school and they went, he's looked at play school, right, throttle him. So they throttle your signal so that they can then have more signal to sell to the customers around you. Now there's three or four ways around this. You can go to a decent ISP who will be straight with you and say, if you pay that extra $10 a month, we will not throttle you. Another way is VPNs. It's a virtual private network. You can go to Chrome, for instance, and go into Chrome and go, I don't want my location notified, and tick that little box, and, because, and then search everything through Chrome, and that sets up a little VPN, so they don't know what you're looking at. So if you're looking at, you know, fox baiting or, you know, tractor maintenance or anything like that, they haven't got a clue, so they can't throttle you. So using a, now there's two types of VPNs. A VPN you can put on your computer at home here, like I've just said, ticking the box with Chrome. 
or you can actually pay about a $6.70, 6 to $7 service for a VPN provider. So all your signal goes off to the VPN and then goes out to the net and nobody knows what you're doing. One good thing about doing that is that nobody knows what your data is. You get a lot less viruses, a lot less muck through your um, emails and how many of us have to troll through all that rubbish. So a VPN is a very good thing and you can just Google it and see plenty of VPN providers. Find, find Australia one, Sydney, Melbourne, and one that's got a number of connections and buy yourself a VPN service. Or at least tick the box in Chrome in the setup, and that includes in your phone too, right? So that you hide your identity. And then you don't get then you don't get slowed on the internet. The other thing is if you're not if you're not with try to go have a look at your plan and say, look, in three months I can get out of this thing or I already can get out of this thing. Go to a decent internet provider because at Kirawatha we set up four farms on one connection. I had one on Harbour ISP, I had one on Activate, I had one on Infinity and one on Optus. And we, and we were looking at, you know, the, the speeds all over the place for being shocking, absolutely shocking and we, you know, and I started drilling down and finding out what was going on. And it was directly related to the ISP that they're hooked up to. Because Pete with Optus was screaming, you know, 44 megabits per second, right? But, the, you know, Matt down with Harbour ISP, two. And I'm going, hang on, they're coming off the same tower, same gear. So then I do a trace network, find out where they all go, you know. So, Harbour, uh, you know, Harbour, where'd it go? It went all the way out to Mudgee. Then it came back and then went up to Newcastle, then finally got to its service in Sydney. And I went, that's ridiculous. I did that with everybody to find out what's going on. Optus, because the, one of the big boys had a number of nodes around Australia, they just went to the quickest one, bang, straight into Young. It was <laughs> just over the hill and he was screaming. So I swapped a whole stack of people around onto Activate and Activate, Unlimited, sixty-nine dollars. They even dropped their, they dropped their money from seventy-nine to sixty-nine, and set, and charged ten dollars to go back to seventy-nine, so I could get the streaming package, the same cost, unlimited, at forty-four megabits per second. So satellite, do, you're on the only one in the room on satellite. Yeah, your kids not. Education, both at, now. both at school. So local school, you're not teaching them. Distance said you're allowed to double your allowance. No, okay, done. The, the problem is with satellite. Not a bad service, but if you're running one or zero or any of these um, accounting packages or the bank, you can't run a cloud service and use these. The latency or the lag doesn't let you do that. So it's a bit of a drawback. Other than that, if you can't get it, it's not still not too bad a service. Okay? 3G, 4G mobile. Has anybody got that modem? You have. So if you own that setup and you can't go to anywhere else, you should buy that cradle for that unit. Have you? Yep, and it has two connections on the back of it for 3G, 4G, and it works, they work pretty darn well. Within 12 months, the battery will swell up. The unit will ha work without the battery. Take the battery out, okay, before you lose the whole thing, okay? I've had hundreds, had to replace hundreds of batteries. So if you're not using a mobile in your pocket and running around and going on holidays too much, just take the battery out and just put it back in the cradle. As I said with antennas, it's important. And now that was the box antenna I was telling you about. And that's the parabolic antenna and this is one of these. And that one there is just a smaller version of that which is really useless out here anyway. So two of those for 4G. One of those 
panels and you can put two, two um, cables into it and they work really well. But these parabolics, we use those a lot and we put two of them up and they really, really work. So two of those on, on that modem there, plugged in, really get it going, okay? There's a few models. Make sure you get the emergency service model. The ordinary model just does phone only. The emergency service model does phone and Wi-Fi. Right? Two components. So it boosts up your phone, but also you could have a laptop in the back or the kids can, you know, when Dad gets home, I can get on the internet and I can hook up the laptop, right, to that unit. Now let's say you're short of a dollar, which we all are. There is no reason why you can't grab that unit out of the truck and bring it in and put it in, in the house, put an antenna on the house, put an antenna inside and have a power supply and hook it up and then you've got Wi-Fi and phone in the house with the unit. They're that good you'll end up buying two of them. But don't be afraid to set up the self I go in a house. Get yourself a decent CB supply, 10 amp or something like that. Get your polarity right um, and uh, plug it in and put it forward one of these up on the roof. And then the little, and it comes with the self I little indoor antenna is just a little one about that big. And you just have it next to the, and you can buy them separately. So you can have all the antennas in place in the house and all the antennas for your truck. They're all regulated. When you sign up for any one of these devices, they want to know who you are and when you went to the toilet. But that's not a big deal. If you're outside of the metropolitans, you're right. If you want to buy one of these inside the metropolitan area or inside a pretty good coverage area, they'll examine you pretty closely. But, you know, if you live at Hay or Tamora or Young, <laughs> not a question. They actually build some panels that match up with this to extend your Wi-Fi and your phone range around. It's a little box about so big. And you just buy them as you go. So you can get that and then a number of these little panels and extend an area. Let's say, oh, you know, the machinery shed's only 50 metres away. You could actually pick up... It's like when I do a cellular network for a farm, I might put a hot spot here and then I put another one over here at the sheep yards and I try to make that one and this one encroach so they can talk to each other. So you make this one talk to each other. So you set up what we call a mesh network. Same as mesh or rim lock on a fence where into the nodes actually sending the signal around and the mesh is actually connecting up to your radios. Did everybody follow me with that one? So you lose any signal, correct? No. Um, when, when we do you know, interconnection stuff like that. We're running at about 450 megabits per second, like absolutely screaming. <laughs> and Telstra's down, uh, everybody else is down at 25 and 30. I mean, it's ludicrous. And we're running at 400 around the farm. So we might lose a little bit, maybe 6%. But 6% or 450 is bugger all compared to 6% off 25. So once we get the signal in and you've got it, Boy, do we amplify it. Now, this is amazing from Optus. And this is, this is just their basic package. 50 gig, 65, 70 gig, 80 a month. And the great thing about it, if, you are any, if you've got a friend that's got an Optus phone, please note what his signal's like. Because if he turns up the house and he's got a decent signal, well, I live in Harry... You've got it. Optus are upgrading their towers and putting these, these 4G LTE lights on their towers and those, those are really making it kick butt. They are really working well. Some of the towers have been upgraded um, and some of them not. Like, you know, when we turn off to go to Colliambly, what's that little town, uh, that turn off down there just below Griffith? Darlington Point. Well, they've, put, they've armed up Darlington Point with every single thing on it. Now, it's really rocking there. Nearly 65 megabits per second at the garage. And I'm going, damn. But 
down at Collie Amberley, they're back down on 3G. Oz Towers. This is a great little app. You can get it on your phone, you can look it up on the internet, and it tells you what every tower in Australia does. No lies, no nothing. It tells you exactly what you want to know. You have to have your phone enabled for location services. So you have to go in and say, yeah, tell everybody where I am. Click that on and you can get this. <laughs> okay, Oz Towers gives you a, a real good list of all the, everything on the tower and you can actually go in and see what Towers, Optus, Telstra, NBN, the whole lot, and it tells you what's on that tower. And it's very, very handy when you're trying to find out, you know, what's that tower over there, is that an Optus one, and what is it, what's it transmitting? So when you have a look in there, it also shows you a little map of where the tower is located to so make sure that you've, we're looking at the right tower. So it is a very handy little app. Farm-wide connectivity. So this is what I do. I go all over Australia connecting up farmers. So with the farm Wi-Fi internet base and mobile phone base. So w our main aim is to get Wi-Fi internet based all over the place and be able to boost that as well at the same time. This is a mesh network. It's a, sorry, it's not a great photo, but it shows you a little photo there about the antennas, sheep yards, cattle yards and that. So these units might have a main unit and then little subunits around. So making your own cellular networks in your, all your important spots on your farm. It could be the house, it could be the machinery shed or wherever. So what we do is we'll bring in the signal from one spot and then we'll bounce it around the farm using a whole stack of number of small devices. If you wanted to extend Wi-Fi around the house, they're a great unit. They just plug into the power. You then just plug your, your modem in and then you can send the Wi-Fi signal around the house. So, now, talking about Wi-Fi, they're the different types of Wi-Fi transmissions that come from your router. And it shows you how many feet. So some of these old ones only go far. Some of them go at 800. But this is just with a small antenna off the modem. If you use a decent antenna, you can extend this quite largely. Okay? And as you can see, the speed and the distance is directly related to each other. So the further away you go, the slower it gets. The closer you are, the faster it gets. And there, all these different ones are the different types of transmissions that come out of your modem. And that Nighthawk modem, I said, does every one of them. Your old $2 modem you've got just does the bottom one. Fine-tune your internet. Picking the right ISP is very, very, very important. There is a number of factors why I like Activate. They're in Australia. Their call centre is in Melbourne. And he speaks bloody English, right? That's the first thing, right? Regardless of price or anything else, that's the first thing you look at. The second thing is, yeah, you look at the price, but what you want to do is look for the bang for the bucks what you get. Some companies, I won't, I won't uh, say it, right? <laughs> right? They will give you a little bit, charge you a lot, and then charge you for every other little extra where a lot of the other ISPs give them to you as the package. So be very careful on the ISP that you use. And as I said, the top big four, so TPG, Westnet, Net, um, Activate, which I like Activate because they don't use it over... over call centres overseas and they'll go the extra mile to help you out. All of them are around the same dollars except the big T, right? All of them will give you unlimited except the big T, right? So what you've got to do is get unlimited. About $70 a month is the sweet spot. And at the minimum speed, 25.5. This 12.1, 
who's on 12-1 in the place? It's useless. You might as well not have internet. You must be on, your slowest speed you sh should be on should be 25-5. Very important. It fluctuates that much that if you're on 12, you'll go into zero a lot of the week. Right? Especially at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. If you're on 25, you might go down to 5 or 8 or 9, but at least you're not in zero. And, and this fluctuation is to do with the lack of bandwidth. So it's important that you are with the, one of the largest ISPs, not the little ones. So VPNs virtually hide your identity. So it's virtual private network. So you still use your still use your ISP or whoever you're with, but what you're doing is putting a mediocre person right in the middle of it, and that person is hiding what you do off your PCs. If I do it PC by PC, I have to arm up that one, that one, that one, the kid's iPad out the back, all that. But if I do it with an ISP and pay $7 to somebody in Sydney, he arms the lot, everything that comes out of my stuff. So every, if you've got 20 items in the house, it fixes up the lot. Okay? So it, it's a good thing. A little bit hard to get around technology-wise, setting it all up. You only have to set it up once and away you go. But it is worth doing. Now, this is called the PEP link balance router. So we talked about the routers with the wireless on it. This lets you put three or four connections in and make one nice big connection out. So if you're a good sized business and you determine like a bloke at Finlay who has runs a trucking service and he has to get backloads for his trucks or he loses thousands of dollars a day. And in trucking and trying to get backloads, first in best dressed. So he needs a good fast service. So what we do is we turn around and put three or four ISPs in there off different companies so that you know one might be up or down or whatever and then he gets a decent size of service out. So if one breaks down, he gets around there. He's got three, it really gets going there. He's got four, it gets even going there. So they, there are a lot of extra things around to get you up and boosted, especially across the farm. Okay, farm automation. So if you set up a farm-wide area network, setting up all these things on your farm then becomes ludicrously cheap and really easy to do. So opening fences, opening, sorry, opening gates, cleaning troughs, putting lights on, switching the compressor on, you're racing home to do a bloody flat tyre, jeez, I've got to wait 40 minutes for that compressor to pump up. Well, you can switch it on on the phone. This is a Sonoff. It's 30 bucks. If it's in Wi-Fi range, it'll switch any 12 volt or 240 item on and off for 30 bucks and tell you, so easy, to, you can't even get the wiring, you, you can't get the wiring mucked up, two wires in, two wires out. And they are brilliant. And that item, you can hang off anything. Floodlights, gates, the house, any, any item that you have to switch on and off. Pumps, or whatever. If you can manually switch it on and off, if you just lost your phone, you can come up and actually switch the little switch and it'll do the same thing. But it, you can have an app on your phone and then you can remotely control that anywhere in the world. What you do, how you do it... Where is that, Where is that signal? signal? I'll explain how this works. So let's say you decide you want to put internet into the house or you've got fast internet to the house or you've got broadband or whatever you've got. So then what we do, on that farm we would then spread the internet all over the farm by setting up all those little hot spots. Let's say the machinery shed or your example, your other farm has internet on there and we beam it out to that little pump station and at that pump station we set up a hotspot. So all it'll be exactly the same as what we've got out there where you've got a uh, power, you can do a solar or ordinary power. power. You've got power, you would have about how many k's is from the house? piece of cake. Two small dishes, about that big, 
pointing at each other or you put a panel antenna in and it covers 120 degrees and then you can put dish there, dish there, dish there, dish on the pump over there. You make it so you've got to see each other, right? But we've got a Kirawatha, you know, we couldn't get to Matt's house because he was just behind a dirty great hill. So we went out to a chook shed that had power, believe it or not. I said, oh, we'll bounce it out of the book's chook shed. I went out to the chook shed and there's bloody power at this chook shed. So we bounced it out to the chook shed, big chook shed, and then bounced it around, and no signal loss, over to Matt's and to his house so he could have internet. So once you have internet at the pump station, you then, you set up, the same thing sets up a hotspot, right? And that's Wi-Fi, what we call a Wi-Fi hotspot. You then can hang anything, cameras, uh, Murphy gauges, uh, all sorts of things off your pumps, a monitor for your, you know, your fuel. I set up one where the guy said, I want to know when the thing switches on and off. Send me a message on the phone, SMS, piece of cake. Did it within about three hours. And we did it um, not through Wi-Fi or the NBN. We did it wirelessly. So we went, up, went around a pretty big set of trees through a river area. And he says, oh, it's playing up. He says, it's just told me the pump switched off. And I'm going, well, it, if it tells you it's off. He says, oh, well, I need some sort of thing where I can believe it. And I said, what do you mean, believe it? He, he got the SMS. Well, I don't believe that. Put a video camera on it so I can see it. <laughs> and I went, damn it. So we went, to the, went up to the hill, put a relay in, bounced it down, put the camera on the gauges, sitting on the gauges on the pump. Right? Right. So he could see the oil pressure, water pressure, the whole works. And he's going, I've found the problem. I says, what's that? It's not the pump at all. I says, it's one of my workers pinching diesel out of the tank behind the bloody pump. <laughs> and so I just put it generally on the thing, but you could see behind there in the tanks and that, that the guy was pulling up every afternoon and filling himself up with <laughs> fuel. So... That, he found out the problem pretty quick, so the video paid off, you know. <laughs> but as I said, once you've set your Wi-Fi up, especially machinery sheds, yards, or any key spot, pump, place, pump stations are a big thing. Something you're visiting two or three times a week or you want to keep an eye on. You can switch things on and off with a simple thing like that, or you can put video cameras or lots and lots of gear there, and, you know, relatively cheap. A Sonoff, S O S O N O W -F, F. And as for putting solar on anything, it's a piece of cake, right? The da these days, you just put a decent battery down the bottom and a solar panel, and I run video cameras forever. Well, that's the idea of it. See, what you do is finding a good hill that sees everything is a real goal. Because if you can get that hill and you can put two solar panels and a decent truck battery in a little chook shed or a, you know, a little garden shed. Putting a camera on or just receiving it, right, is let's say 80, 100 watts, right, in power draw. But if I'm putting a repeater in, so I'm picking the signal up from the house, bringing it up and then I'm sending it out on 120 degrees in a couple directions, then that, then that goes into about 230, 240 watts. So if it's getting into that, you need a couple of batteries and a couple of panels. A repeater, if you're having it on and off. You can have it so that it only wakes up at certain times, switches itself on and off and saves power. There's a number of ways around it. But that gear costs a mount, and the gear to do that, you might as well just bite the bullet and do the whole lot in one hit and have something decent there. Oh, UHF different. I, I can send a UHF through straight through a whole stack of trees, over hills, and around the corner. But you've got to remember, UHF signals and those signals, the data is very minor. Are you on? Are you off? And, and not much more, right? Where well, we're talking about a fair amount of data to send video back and forwards. Cameras, if I put a camera and I'm looking at that doorway, I can count the sheep coming in and out of that doorway, either this way, that way, both ways, and I can count them all. 
I can also track how fast he's going and his movements and if he stays in any particular spot for any length of time, it'll send me a message. Now, video surveillance can be very, very handy in the paddock. Very handy. Especially looking at troughs and watering points and machinery sheds or anywhere you want to count animals in and out or vermin in and out, which is good too. Now that's a Murphy switch. Now that works off CB or 900 meg or other than Wi-Fi. Now that unit there can report back out to your house and then eventually come back on your phone and you can switch on and off. But it's, it's low data, okay? So when you're using that, you're not sending a lot of data, only just it's on or if it's off and I can do that. And there's plenty of these types of units around. This is you know, web control and these things you can just plug in and set up to automate yards and sheds and everything like that and they're absolutely brilliant. That one there will open 30 gates. This one here is the same again. That one will do all sorts of lighting and everything. This one will do Wi-Fi and all sorts of video. There's heaps of different types of ones. This is the unit that you would love. It's power pack in their last five years, right? So no solar, it's got its own power. It monitors the tank level or the flow or the pressure. And these units can come with auxiliary switches on them to switch pumps on and off. So if this gets low, it'll automatically turn the pump on. It also will then notify you on your phone. Now these units are independent of NBN or anybody. So this type of technology has been around for a long time and is very, very good. And as I said, you know, they've got their own monitoring systems, their own tank, their own switchboards on and off, all sorts of stuff. Have a look at them. They're a pretty good mob. I, I, I think they're great. They're at the high end of the market. There are several ones around on the cheaper end. Even Gallagher make a, a, a cheap pump monitoring system and it's wireless. So when you're adopting new technology, find somebody who knows a little bit about it and have a good look at it, at, at that technology with them. Find somebody who's already bought it and, you know, and see what it's like. You know, but one of the biggest things, has it got backup? Can I ring somebody when the shit hits, sorry, can I ring somebody when it goes wrong, right, to, you know, help me out to fix it. And that's one of the biggest things I, when I'm picking new technology, that's one of the biggest things. Same with that ISP with Active 8. 10 pluses for the people sitting in Melbourne, you know. This is man me an extension, and that's what I was talking about, the chook shed. There he is there. So we came in on the NBN tower, come in on one of those, and then we set up, the, uh, set up that, 120 degree sectors, all over the farm and then we put 12 houses hanging off it and we relayed it in and out all over the place. Oh, we haven't got a map here, I'll show you. So that gives you an idea of the NBN and that shear and shed was sitting right on a hill just there, perfect storm and then we covered all that area, all that area and now we're going about to cover, cover all that area too by putting a relay over here. So that was, you know, so that's, you know, bouncing it into areas that they haven't got it. So that was the shearing shed. That's Pete's house way down through the gap there. That's the same, that's like rudimentally shows you the shearing shed and then going out to one set of houses there and another house here. And now this looks a mess. We've got 12 houses all the way around here off the, or four NBN connections. And that's, oh, that's quite an old map, but that's your NBN coming in. And that's 202 by 120 degree sectors. And we've now got four up there. So if you know, do you know the McColls or Langfields or anybody out of Kirawatha? You split it up, but the main unit was about nine grand, yeah. right? And each house ranged from $800 to $1,200. Each spot we 
armed up, piggery, shared office, whatever. But then everybody then pitched in for the nine grand. I think they put in about 1,800 bucks each for the main unit, right? And we put a rack and everything inside the shearing shed and everything. It's a pretty neat setup. And Pete built this stand so nobody was going to kill themselves servicing the antenna. Uh, it took about a couple of hours with a bit of walk mesh and that. So I think that, you know, the 12 houses at 1,200 bucks each is, you know, roughly, you know, 12 grand or something like that or 15 grand. And then the unit was about 10 grand. But then divide the whole lot up by 12 houses, you know, two and a half grand each. Not even worried, you know, to give them <coughs> network, their own network, their own Wi Fi, their own everything all over the place, 44 megabits per second they're running at. And some of them have got them ganged together, running at 80 megabits. The office is, you know, there's a couple of spots there where we really need really good internet because, you know, they pay the people by the hour there, so they want to, you know, but the kids of the play school, they, you know. So that gives you another idea where we couldn't get around the hill because there's a hill in the road. So into, you know, there to the bounce point around the map and there was a big hill here. So it gives you an idea. So there's many ways around, get, you know, once you set it up and you've got plenty of farmers within an area, you'll be surprised where you can and can't get. You'll, be, you'll have a saturation once you get it all up and rolling. And that was that relay, the case study on the relay. And that's just simply in and out and a power in the shed. Two cables down to a little box and straight back up. And we put lightning protection here and downstairs in case it gets hit. What uh, put lightning protection for storm and damage? Yeah, like put what is it? Yeah, what, How do I do it? Yeah, yeah okay. You, you have to put an earth stake in the ground. It has to be about yay high, right? Knock it down so it's sticking out about so far, right? You then have to put a 100 mil pipe around it, a poly pipe. You run two big earth cables from the rack and from the mast, right? And then when the, when the Cat5 cable comes in, it comes into a little box and fits in and then there's a big earth bar on the back of that light arrestor box. That light arrestor box goes down into the cable, down into the earth stake. We, nine times out of 10, I try to put the, you know, there's a special sort of like salt stuff you put in put some water in there, but I just tell them every three or four weeks, can you piddle in the, piddle in the uh, tube? And that keeps enough salt can content to keep good contactivity with the uh, earth and the earth bar. It's got to be a salty contact. Well, if you're out of that, just go up with a bit of water and some salt, you know. <laughs> There's a couple of ways to skin that cat. But uh, <laughs> so we earth the crap out of everything because a lot of places like, you know, a lot of range and places right on top of hills and that, so lightning's pretty good. We've had, we've had that in 16 months and it's been hit three times. So it gives you an idea. And we put it... That's Langfields, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it did hit silo twice. It was, and we're not talking about little bloody hits here. We're talking about melt the half the friggin' silo. It was pretty bad, the you know. Yeah. Two big sheds and a control centre and, you know, it was, it was pretty bad. So went over and Pete insured it and they pay Pete $20 a month to keep the insurance up, right? Uh, share the insurance cost and we said, right, let's get in there and, you know, clean it all up and add a few extras to make sure we get it a bit better and better every time we get a lightning strike. So we did and we've been going along great. And it, it's, it's working really well and... I've got lots of relays all over the place and lots of one-to-ones, but if you can get your farmers involved in a group area up a, up a valley, right, mate, the costs become stupidly, you know, really cheap and the benefits to have, you can have an omni-actual antenna on your car and pick up Wi-Fi in your truck driving around. There's all sorts of things you can do. But that gives you a line of sight that shows you exactly point A to point B so we know exactly if we're going to put an antenna in there and we want a line of sight, 
It even shows me the terrain, how big the antennas are, the height of the mast at either end. It, it, go, it drills even down to the type of equipment they recommend to use. There's no guesswork, tells you what frequencies and everything, and tells you what you've got to do to get the job done. And that gives you a train link analysis. You've got to remember when you send a signal to point A to point B, like if I send, oh, it's not that bloody good. <laughs> if I send a, a, a signal from this torch to my hand, there's a Fennel factor around it. So that bit area, we've also got to give it a little bit of a, a, a bubble, like a football bubble around it to make sure nothing encroaches. But your, your goal here is, you know, connectivity all over your farm. Thank you, but I've got one small thing. Local case study, there's a young lady in the place here who's frustrated, she's the only person that's got internet on the satellite. And she sent me a few drawings of where she is and what farm she needs to contact and, or connect, sorry, and I've been having a real good look at Ariel Park and Tamora and everything like that. And that's you there. Here to here is within the footprint. And we looked at that one, that one there is in the footprint. And that one there has a number of spots where we can actually bounce it from there to there. I thought you were actually this one. That, so a little bit of, sorry. Yeah. But it gives you an idea of, you know, the, the coverage. That's the Telstra coverage area. But there's your kilometres between each of the places she needs to do. And depending on the coverage here and what we've got here, this here is not a hard ask. 12 kilometres on these things is not a hard ask or expensive. Just got to get some height. But that gives you an idea of the NBN coverage in these areas. So there are spots here that that farm down here would be able to pick up on the NBN. You then grab that and send it in, or you might find it up here and send it in, or vice versa. There are a number of ways of skinning a cat to get signal all into that area, right? And I started doing the link, uh, that's um, another one we'll drill down with the roads and the NBN coverage. As you can see, it's pretty scattery in there, so I think it wouldn't be very hard to pick up a house anywhere in these areas to get it into anywhere in these areas. So, there's another one. Oh, talking about the Oz Towers, it tells you everything that's on the tower. It tells you the signal and what you get off each tower, whether they're Telstra, Optus, Vodafone or NBN. So you can just go to each one of these and then have a look what they provide. And if you click on one of these, it actually shows you the map of where that tower located is on Google Earth. So yeah, there it is, shows you the tower where it's connected. Now that's that one over near um, Tamora. That's where the tower and you live just down here, or that, that house. I did a link analysis there, so that's where the tower is. There, it's a 40 metre tower. It's an NBN tower. There's a heap of towers around here, actually. And that's line size. So when I've got green like that, it shows me that I've got a direct line of sight from there to there. And I gave this end, I think. So this little bit here tells me, you see, you see the terrain, how much going. That's 10 metres that end and 40 metres that end. So this house here, not a problem for NBN. Not a problem. So that gives you, oh yeah, there you are, it's a bit of a look on the system. At the moment, the gods at NBN have decided they can only go 14 kilometres, right? So that's as far as they'll allow you out. But what you've got to do is you've got to find somebody on a hill that's got NBN at least 14 kilometres towards you. You find somebody there, then we can get it from there to you, 14 kilometres, away we go. So you, you have a good look around and you say, Ian, I've found something. Here's their address. And I go on this 
And I set it up and I do the line and I say, right. And I says, go and talk to your neighbour there. I can get him and he can go to him and then across to you. There is a dozen ways of skinning this cat. So that's 30 kilometres, right? We're already getting NBN to pay for half of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's an advantage of finding somebody on the top of a hill and to get it as far as as close as you can get to you. Or you can't go smaller than K average. No, I can go as much as I can see. They're only allowed to go 14 K, God bless their little souls. You can get it at 30, 40 Ks out. But the problem is they won't allow because it. it's it's you know, the signal drops off, oh it's too hard, gee, I don't know, you know. The, yeah, the monitor mightn't be big enough at work, I don't know. <laughs> huh? That's right. So what we do is we look at everybody within that 14 Ks who's got NBN and go walk around and with the hat in the hand and say, buddy pal, you know, you've got three fr connections sitting here. I've got four farmers out there that love you to death, <laughs> you know, and it, it, it's happening all over the place. So everybody's, you know, hopping on board to give a hand, you know, and that way everybody wins. He gets a little bit of power for his, his NBN connection. We sort it out so he gets a bloody fast NBN connection <laughs> from dismal to fast and that sometimes is a big advantage for people in business. 